Hair Traits, Color, Texture, and More, written by Buffy Silverman. It's time to feed our brain dictionary, boys and girls. Let's look at the glossary. One word you'll see repeatedly today is alleles. It's kind of a mouthful, allele. It's one or two or more forms of a gene. Birth parent, a parent who is genetically related to his or her child. Gene, one of the parts of the cells of all living things. Genes are passed from parents to children and determine how you look and the way you grow. Pigment, a substance that gives color to something. Trait, a quality or characteristic that makes one person or thing different from another. White forelock, a patch of white hair above the forehead. Widow's peak, a V-shaped point formed by hair in the middle of the forehead. Keep your eyes and ears peeled for these words as we continue to read. Page four, traits. No other person looks or acts just like you. You might have brown eyes like your brother. You might run fast like your mother, but you are different from them in other ways. Page five. The ways in which people differ are called traits. Skin color is one trait, freckles are another. People have many traits. This girl has dimples, her friend does not. Dimples are a trait. Your body has directions for different traits. These directions are called genes. Genes tell your body how to work and grow. Let's read that again. Genes tell your body how to work and grow. You have thousands of different genes. This picture of a gene was made on a computer. Pretty cool, isn't it? Page seven. Genes come in pairs. That means in twos. You got your genes from your birth parents. One copy of each gene came from your mom the other copy came from your dad. Birth parents are related to their kids. Adoptive parents take a child into their family and become his or her parents. Page eight. People are more alike than different. They share most of the same traits. You are more like other people than you are like a dog or an ant. Page nine, on your head. Look around, you see children with black hair. Others have brown or blonde hair. A few have red hair. These kids below have different hair colors. Page 10, hair color is a trait. Genes give directions for hair color. This girl has brown hair. Brown hair is a trait. Page 11. How do genes control hair color? They tell the body to make certain pigments. Pigments color hair. Genes also tell the body how much pigment to make. Pigment is a substance that gives color to something your skin, oh sorry, <laughs> your skin has pigment too. This boy's genes told his body to make lots of pigment. That's why he has dark hair. A gene comes in two different forms called alleles. This boy has alleles for dark hair. Page 13. This girl's genes told her body to make less pigment. That's why she has light hair. This girl has alleles for light hair. Redheads. Do you know anyone with red hair? Fewer people have red hair than any other color. This boy has red hair. It is not a common hair color. Red hair comes from a special pigment. One allele of a gene tells the body to make it. A person needs two copies of this allele to have red hair. 
these kids got an alley eel for red hair from their mom. They also got one from their dad. That's why they have red hair. Everyone in this family has genes for red hair. These parents have brown hair. But one of their children has red hair. How can that happen? Each parent has one alaeel for red hair. One daughter has two copies of that alaeel. She got one from each parent. Curly or straight? You might have straight hair. Your friend's hair might be wavy. Another friend might have tightly curled hair. Genes tell your body to grow straight, wavy, or curly hair. For many traits, one of a pair of genes takes control. But that's not true for hair texture. Some members of this family have straight hair, and others have curly. Different directions from many genes blend together. These sports fans have all different kinds of hair textures. Some hair is wavy, some is curly, and some is straight. The girl on the right got alley eels for straight hair from her dad. She got alley eels for curly hair from her mom. Her hair is wavy. It is curlier than her dad's hair, but is less curly than her mom's. This girl has wavy hair. Page 23, uncommon traits. Some hair traits are less common than color or curls. This man has a patch of white hair above his forehead. The trait is called a white forelock. A child needs only one alley eel for a white forelock to have one. Often members of a family share this trait. Pull back the hair on your forehead. Do you see a V-shaped point? This trait is called a widow's peak. This boy has a widow's peak, but this girl does not. Her hairline is straight. Scientists aren't sure how genes control widow's peaks. Hair can be straight or curly. It can be black, brown, blonde, or red. What hair traits do you have? Quiz time! Let's see what you've learned, boys and girls. We'll play and learn together. Question number one. What is true about genes? Reread this page and think about the question. What is true about genes? Genes come in pairs. You got your genes from your birth parents. One copy of each gene came from your mom. The other copy came from your dad. Your mom and your dad make a pair. Here's our question with four answer choices. It's so important to read all four choices that you can find so that you can find the very best choice. What is true about genes? There are about 220 of them in the human body. Do you remember if the page gave us a number? Choice B, they come in pairs. Does that sound familiar? A mom and a dad make two. Choice C, they need fats to function. Hmm, do you recall reading about fats? Choice D, they are made in the body's liver. Liver, liver, liver. Do you recall the word liver? Now that you've listened to all four choices, pick your best choice and let's see how you did. Is it A, B, C, or D? Do you have the answer in your mind? And the answer is B. Genes come in pairs. Mom has a copy of genes, dad has a copy of genes. One plus one is two, and that is a pair. Dun, dun, dun. Question number two. Here's the question. 
Genes tell the body to make certain pigments, which act to, mm, so we have to figure out what do pigments do. Let's reread this page together. How do genes control hair color? They tell the body to make certain pigments. Ooh, that word was in the question. Pigments, there it is again, color hair. What do pigments do? Color hair. Genes also tell the body how much pigment to make. Ah. Now let's look at our answer choices that we can go and put with our question. Genes tell the body to make certain pigments which act to, ah, it's not a question, it's a statement, and we have to finish the statement. Genes tell the body to make certain pigments, which act to A, make hair strong, B, make hair grow faster, C, color hair, or D, curl hair strands. Hmm. Which one sounds the most familiar? Make your best choice and... Dun, da, da. The answer is C, color hair. Genes tell the body to make certain pigments which act to color hair. Question number three. Don't you love that furry three? I do. Here's our question so we know what to read for. What has to be true for a daughter to get red hair? Hmm, read this. These parents have brown hair. Yep, dad has brown hair, mom has brown hair. But one of their children has red hair. There she is up at the top. How can that happen? Each parent has one alleel for red hair. One daughter has two copies of that alleel. She got one from each parent. <gasps> Here we go. Let's answer the question with four good choices. What has to be true for a daughter to get red hair? Choice A. At least one of her parents has both gene copies for red hair. Hmm. One parent, two copies. Now let her be. She got one black and one blonde gene from each parent. Does that make sense? Choice C. Each of her parents has one alleel for red hair. And D. One of the genes for hair color she got from her parents was damaged. Which one do you think is correct? Are you ready? Dun da da! Choice C. Each of her parents, which we know is a pair, has one alleel for red hair. And as we know, one from mom and one from dad create a pair. The other three choices just talks about one. C talks about the pair. Furry number four. Here's our question. We'll focus our reading on that. What is a widow's peak? Pull back the hair on your forehead. Do you say a V shape? This trait is called a widow's peak, and we can see that on a little girl. What is a widow's peak? Choice A, a clump of hair that stands straight up. Hmm, did the little girl's hair stand straight up? B, a V-shaped point in the hairline. You recall reading about a V-shape? C, the tiny hole, hole? from which a hair strand grows. Hmm. D, an S-shaped part of the hair that occurs naturally. Interesting. Make your choice. 
And the answer is a widow's peak is B, beautiful B, a V-shaped point in the hairline. Question five, the last one. And it's not a question, it's a statement. We have to finish the statement. When the girl got straight hair a la ease and curly hair a la ease, she had, what did she have? Let's read this and find out. Find the proof, the evidence. The girl on the right got Ali yields for straight hair from her dad. She got Ali eels for curly hair from her mom. Her hair is wavy. It's curlier than her dad's hair, but less curly than her mom's hair. Let's look at our answer choices. When the girl got straight hair, Ali eels, and curly hair, Ali eels, she had A, straight, shiny hair, B, very curly hair, C, a white forelock, or D, wavy hair. Make your choice. Which one's the best one? Which one do you recall from the text? And the answer is wavy hair. So very exciting, boys and girls. This will add to your accelerated reader point goal. If you simply look at the picture, you will see that in that accelerated reader. It's called Hair Traits, Color, Texture, and More. Our author, again, is Buffy Silverman. This is a nonfiction book, meaning it's based on truth. It is a third grade level reader. There are 650 words. And all you have to do is type in that quiz number that you might want to jot down. 151033. It'll take you right to the test, which just happens to have five questions. If you get all five questions right, it is worth half a point. Good luck. And I hope you enjoyed today's story.